and that's what you're going to see. So maybe you can show it again now, what we're going to do. Okay. So, I will uh, show you some what is the... So I will use some words about what uh, the EV3 by itself is going to do with sound. These uh, capabilities, the sound capabilities, this will be rather short because most of you might know that these capabilities are not that ample like uh, the other stuff you can do with the EV3, at least what is built in. And more interesting will be to see the, some video examples what the community has done has done with uh, sound has done with sound with um, community robots. Then I will hand over to Aswin to my colleague Aswin, uh, which we we teamed later almost rather recently for the for the rock band or uh, the band of robots because he's not a, a rock style guy. He rather like to do some blues, and I do uh, want to do some some uh, rock stuff with the band. So let's see how this is going to develop in the future. And funnily enough, but I will uh, tell you more about this when I hand it over to him. And uh, then we might discuss some ideas you might have for sound projects or questions. So, first thing, inbuilt speaker is. Um, the in inbuilt sound capabilities are not that high of EV3. You might know that already. All you got is some internal uh, speaker you can use, which make very low noise, low volume uh, noise tones. Okay, you can play WAV files or that kind of stuff. Uh, I, I wanted to show you an example of of uh, of this of the singer speaking and making sounds, but somehow that didn't work out. In the last minute, broke down. So I concentrate on the on the videos, so you can see how the videos. There's, it's much much better examples than uh, the small stuff that I set up here. What's interesting is that you can um, use any almost any uh, sounds as long as they are not too. The, the files are not too big. You can even record your, your own uh, sounds and load it on the brick, and then it can play these sounds. Problem is you won't hear that much because it's very, the volume is very low and there's no audio out, uh, output. So you can't just plug in some speakers or some, uh, the likes of it. But nevertheless, you can do some pretty nice sound effects with that. The other uh, possibility that you have is more the passive way. You can have a sensor that senses the sounds around you. There's, uh, some of you might know this, um, might know the NXT sound sensor. This is the one that I use as micro because it uh, looks like an old style mic. In fact, it's uh, a sound sensor. So you can you can say, uh, listen. You can make your robot listen for sounds. It's not that elaborate that you can uh, distinguish language or that like, it's just the, the volume of, of noise. In the EV3 set, it, 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 uh, it was originally part of the NXT1 set, and in the NXT2 set it was dropped in favor of, I guess, the summer shooter, or something like that, because people realized, I guess, um, the real, LEGO realized it was not used that much. I just thought it would be. So, but it can still be uh, be bought in your online stores, and you can use it. Uh, you can use it still with uh, the EV3 brake also. So let's let's have a look at uh, at some examples what what the community did in uh, in regard to sound with with mindstorms over the last 50 years. I just picked up some nice examples that illustrate some different, different aspects what you can do with a, I guess, with an with a increasing complexity. So, I, I, these are all videos you see uh, that are freely available on YouTube. The first one, it's a rather old one, is the idea that you use the brick to operate, or the robot to operate. Do we have sound? 
to operate real instruments. There should be some music. The, the real music the uh, robots make. What you see is the bricks actually drive some Lego, movable Lego parts that are attached to real instruments. And they just play these, these instruments. This was made by, by some crazy guy from, from, uh, from Denmark who always has, has a lot of Lego parts in his trousers. I guess, uh, I guess you got the point. We could uh, just uh, move over to the next one. But, but, but. Yeah, it was, it was really nice. And it's rather old. That was done with, with the NXT1 set, I guess. And there was also, I remember there was also a version he made with the other X before, but I couldn't find any video. So here's another interesting stuff with what I said. You can make... You can make him talk, and then Bueller. he moves the lips. What we've got here is failure to communicate. <laughs> My mom always said, life was like a box of chocolates. Here's Johnny. Okay. I go, would you give me a hand with the bag? Certainly. You take the blonde and I'll take the one with the tail. <laughs> we are the knights who say... We did for the singer, for the rock band, for the singing robots, but more elaborate because it's much louder. So, the next one. The next one is a, is a, is a simple use of the internal speaker with in connection with uh, sensor input, with other sensor input. So it's some kind of telegraph made by Dave Parker, who made a lot of interesting robots with, with the NXT set. Uh, we lost the sound somehow. Okay. That is something that uh, rather easily comes to, to, one mind, to one's mind when you see the touch sensor. Oh, we can do a telegraph with, the, uh, with that. Okay, the next one. So this is uh, also made, I guess, by Dave Parker. And I just thought it a very cute idea to do with a birthday cake who plays... Happy birthday. With a candle. Actually, I don't know why, why he uses this, uh, why he uses the sound center here. Listen to the blowing candle. Sorry? Listen to the blowing candle. Ah, yes, you're right. Now you're right. So if you blew it to, to, so, uh, to blow down uh, the, 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 the fire, the flame, and then it stops. It goes down. So this is a very interesting project done by a, uh, a girl from, from Holland, from the Netherlands, where I was, was always contributing the software for. She makes really great stuff with Lego friends, and she's one of these very, uh, she's a very, she brings in a very artistic attitude to, to the whole Mindstems community. And the whole project is about a Lego gramophone that plays sounds. So this is how the how the internal sen, uh, sound speaker sounds when you amplify the sound. Not very spectacular, uh, what uh, in regard to the sound, but very. I guess it's rather spectacular on the technique that's behind. Apart from the great design of the Lego gramophone. Because 
the actual sounds are read, are read from a light sensor, from a color sensor, and these are color is color code in the, on the on the on the bottom side of the uh, of the discs. So you uh, you can virtually play any any melody here with the same program because you just have to make these. I just have to make these these uh, these cover covered uh, these these covered discs on the bottom. So uh, I guess you will uh, it, it will be shown in, in the next. Yeah. So this is color coding, and each color stands for another for another uh, tone and another sound, and it's red from below, from the from two two colored sensors. This is the, the Dutch national anthem. And in the beginning, in the beginning, and this is called Annika, they made it all by hand. Each blade, which took weeks, or at least hours. So they asked me, couldn't you make me a program? Because we, we knew each other, could you make me a program? Just to make these, to print these tricks, uh, these discs from a uh, standard music XML format. You get millions of songs in standard music XML formats in the web, and you just have to need you just uh, need a program to print uh, to make this disc from that and print it out. But that's what I did. For me. So I guess this is a very very nice uh, nice pro uh, application of sound with uh, the NXT or with Mindstorms. If you, have, if you happen to, go to, to, to do some research at, at the web, look for Annika Wurzon or Wurzon at all. She has a lot of very great, great, very well made uh, videos. So, next one is another one from Ireland who made this, who made this, this sound machine. The idea is to have, to, it's, it's, uh, it goes in the same direction. The idea is to have different colored, and uh, different colored uh, bricks, like here, and different tracks that control different aspects of the song, rhythm, sound, volume of. The so we have we, uh, he was on, on an event in I guess it was Jakarta or Malaysia, where the, the children could do their own stuff, their own music. It's sort of like this guy who is in, uh, who has this rotating, uh, this disc where you put the, the, the wooden stuff on it. It's the same principle. Yeah, and it was a nice break, but after two or five hours, when you stand next to him and people, uh, children coming all the time and making sound, you get absolutely crazy. <laughs> Then you come to volume. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the, 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 the mother of all electric guitars for, by Dave Parker, who invented it. So you see, it has a rather long story. I guess it was 2008, maybe, when he made that. He, he had the, uh, first uh, this idea to use the ultrasonic uh, sensor to, um, to read the distance with the electronic sensors and make the sound from that, from that information. So the nearer you are to the sound sensor, the higher the, uh, the, the pitch is, the volume, uh, the, the higher the pitch is, yes. And I guess it was, I was, when I saw that I was blown away because a lot of people I know were blown away because they, they, they thought, why haven't we thought of that? It's so simple idea, but you you just need to have it, and and sometimes it's it's, it's just that with robotic building, you just have to need to have this this great idea, even if it's a simple idea, and, and you wonder by yourself why I haven't I thought of that by myself. I've seen some of the, of you all also have uh, some of those uh, maybe no you don't know if it was you, but someone here also has that that guitar with him and played it. 
You could also make that way, I don't know if you know that, that uh, rather modern instrument where you put your hand in a magnetic field and move it, and then it makes sounds in, in, in this and in this direction, the, the theremin, it's a Russian instrument. Very uh, interesting to see, and it makes those those very those very um, scary sounds, like in in in, in horror films, ooh, 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 and that stuff. And you could do that. That's one of my my projects I'd, I'd like to do one day. Hey, what's that? Okay, I guess uh, we 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 got the point. <laughs> we got we got the point now. So maybe, maybe we could uh, we could take the other one, the next uh, one. Then. Next one is just the the, 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 the present. It really made the idea really ma uh, even made it in the in the actual EV3 set as a bonus model made by some Italian engineer. You see. So this is the this is not the Italian engineer, but that was the only uh, only video, a reasonable video I could found. And I guess it shows uh, very nice the, the application of the hood stuff. I really love the design of the guitar. It, 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 it's made with one single EV3 set. And it also has uh, some additional functionalities. So this is what you can do with, with more than one sensor. Uh, or at least with, uh, not with an NXT sound sensor, but with an um, ultrasonic sensor. So there, there should still one be left, I guess. This is made. This video is made by an, by the same Italian engineer, crazy guy, and it shows a different aspect. Just to use external devices to create sound on your robot. So this one uses. Um, <laughs> yes, it has, it has some sense for, for dramatic effects. This Italian guy, uh, guy maybe like every Italian, I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, I can say that because I have Italian descendants. So. Okay, uh, so we see some aspects. And this, the, the last one is a rather is a more advanced one. It's not directly made with EV3, but it uses uh, this, uh, the smartphone to make sounds with a uh, sound generating API on the smartphone itself. So it's, it's not really EV3, but it, of course it's an EV3 model. And you could attach, um, like we did it with the rock band, you can, you can get sensor input or something that and, and talk to the, to, the, to the smartphone and then make, or to a PC, and then make, generate speech, language, something like that on the PC, so this is just even more um, impressive than with your robot when he's really talking because that is something that we expect from robots. Most of the robots we see with EV3 or with other, other robots also, they, um, they, they make no sound or just a motor sound. But what you want, what, when, you, when you look at a TV and movies, the robots always are, have a very very um, elaborate way of communicating, talking. I'll be back, for instance. And we, we want to see that on the robot also, to make it much more lifelike when it's communicating that way with we, because we are just communicating uh, amongst each other that way, with, with language. And I guess that's, that's something that really is, is um, it's on the path for Mindstorms also, for EV3 Mindstorms. Just make it more lifelike also to children. When he talks, it's a completely different, different thing when the robot communicates with, with the kid when it comes or it doesn't, when it just does, uh, does something. When he talks to the kid, it's, it's really a, a very impressive sight. Even when you go to the, to the, to, uh, to the back, to the event and you see the, the rock band and it's move, just moving, the singer is just moving, or the singers, uh, we have more than one that is moving his lips to, uh, to, the, uh, to the voice track of the, of the song. It's, it's, even that is rather impressive also when you see, oh, obviously it's talking to me or it's singing. Um, so um, that brings me, no, one before, there should one in between. Yes. Yeah.
That brings me to, to the band of robots. If you want maybe some little history before I hand over to Aswin, maybe some little history. This, this started uh, with my, my, my um, coming interest in, in doing robotics with art. Uh, I started off as a, some, it started off some, some finger exercise, doing one single small robot. Can I do that? Moving to to some to some music, simulating music, and that started two years ago. And I did some small prototype proof of concept. And Lego asked me, "Oh, that's great! Can we show that on an event?" And so I've been for, for Lego uh, on other events before. So I said, yeah, I can bring it along. And then it evolved to, to the first version of, uh, to the first version uh, of, of the band two years ago. And another version uh, last year that was more, more robust, more stable. But was, what was really missing was synchronization between the music and the robots. The robots, they moved, they did their stuff. It looked quite good, but it wasn't synced with the music at all. So I was thinking about a way to do that for the next event, for Prague, for instance, for this here. And funnily enough, there was this, this man, Aswin Baumeister, here you see him, um, who was working at that time at the, at the, at the same idea. And so, and, uh, and so I asked him, hey, let's try efforts. Uh, let, let, let's shine our, our capabilities that we have. Team up. And that's what, uh, what often happens in, in, in the Mindsome community. You see, some other guy, like, like uh, B uh, Bas has already mentioned, is, is doing some, uh, some interesting stuff you want uh, that fits into what you are interested in or what you want to do. And then you just, just call him, hey, how about I'm on this one and that one, and how, why don't we join, uh, join our capabilities? And, and, and make some something really great, and this is, I guess, one of the things that is possible now uh, due to the internet, because we met here for the first time, except for ten minutes somewhere on, on another when we just talked to quit shortly to each other. But all the, the stuff that that we made for the for the rock band, that was made only over the internet. So the first time our robots play together here, is is. Uh, it's, it's really the first time. We never had them together before. And it worked out pretty well, at least for now, uh, until now. <laughs> so I hand over to Aswin now. He will talk about the rock band and whatever you want to talk about. Hi, guys. Uh, th thanks for showing up. Um, I want to tell you a bit about rock band. Uh, there was a highly technical title to my presentation, but um, I will make sure we understand each other. It won't be that technical. Um, but before I go into the rock band, um, I want to tell you how I came uh, by the idea of having this rock band. And this idea sprung uh, when I was a very small child, like four, like five years old. In the store in our town we had a, a device and we called it the bimbo box. And I show you the bimbo box. It's, it's a very special device. And I was intrigued by this. Here it is. To me today it seems like uh, a few uh, stuffed monkeys that uh, move and they don't uh, move in sync with the music. But when I was this young, th this was a world to me. This was magic. I could sit before this box waiting for hours uh, for somebody to come along and put a dime in it and the box started playing. Uh, I loved these monkeys and to me they were uh, real. And this, uh, this feeling I wanted to recreate with my Mindstorm set. I thought, can I create something that makes music and that feels real to, to me and to others? Um, and this was the basic idea. But to make it happen uh, was a bit difficult. 
because uh, I, <coughs> I can build a robot, you can build a robot. Uh, I do have the sound sensor that uh, Matthias showed us, but it isn't enough to get a robot moving in sync with the music. And that's key to me. So I wanted a robot that played music, that played music uh, in sync with the music. It should have the feeling, it should give the feeling that the robot plays music. And I wanted a lot of robots playing music together also. And I wanted also having a lot of people making robots that could play together. So we can be like, uh, what kind of instrument is your favorite? I don't know. Eh? Lego. <laughs> a Lego instrument. Yeah. <laughs> but, but we have people playing the guitar, we have people that like drums. Flute. Flute. Well, you make me a flute player, yeah, and then we can play alone. So this is the idea. Let's make robots all together. You make one uh, musician, I make the other, and we join together, and we have a band, and we make music together. And I don't understand uh, Czech, uh, you don't understand Dutch. Yeah? But music we all un understand. So if we come together and play music together, we do understand each other. And that's the idea behind this rock band. So, but how to build it? Um, you're all builders, so I think you have some interest uh, to know how to build this, uh, how this rock band was built. Um, there is um, two kinds of music. There's sound, like uh, in an MP3, yeah. and this, uh, this an MP3 file basically tells you how a sound wave looks like. Yeah. And if you play this on the computer, it translates this to uh, electro electronic signals that uh, drive your speaker, and the speaker follows the same pattern, and then you hear sound. But there's a second way uh, to uh, store music on your computer and that is called uh, the MIDI format. The MIDI format is a file format that is used in electronic instruments. If you have a synthesizer and you store a song on your synthesizer, it is stored as a MIDI file. A MIDI file does not contain sound. It does contain instructions for your synthesizer. Uh, so what does an instruction look like? An instruction could be uh, to tell your synthesizer to make a sound that sounds like a uh, piano, or make a sound that sounds like a guitar. And then the next instruction would be to tell you what kind of sound. sound. Make a high note, beep, make a low note. Oh. So that are MIDI instructions. These MIDI instructions uh, are used by the synthesizer to generate sound. But the same instructions can be used by robots to generate movement and give the impression of making music. So if I go back to the example, make a guitar sound. If I uh, give this instruction to a guitar player, robot, then he can react to it. But what kind of sound does he have to make? Make the high note, bing, make the low note, boing. So that's how it works. It really is that simple. Get the instruction and translate it to a, to a position uh, of the hand of the robot. And you do that with a, a motor movement. It's that simple. It was a bit hard to implement it because uh, the MIDI files are on the computer and you want this MIDI file to, uh, to be sent to the robot but also to a synthesizer. So there's a, a little synthesizer on the robot that, uh, that generates the sounds and there's a, um, something wireless, something that magically transfers uh, the same instruction to the robot and the robot reacts to it as well. So there we have it. Robots that uh, seem to make sound, they don't. Yeah? They're both driven by, the, by this MIDI file.
But you have the impression that the robot makes the sound. That's all there is to it. So what about my dream of making music all together? If you like to, you can make a, a musical robot playing an instrument. I need some violins. I need a bass. Um, I need a, a flute. I need a, a trumpet, trumpet. If you want to make one, you can. And you can use the software that's uh, available on the internet and connect to it. And the software will make sure that the MIDI file is played, that the instructions are sent to your robot. The only thing you have to do is to react to it. Um, there's two downsides. I have to be honest with you, there's two downsides uh, to it. The first one is a technical one. You have to uh, use the Java software, at least at the moment, because that's how we build it. And the second one is MIDI files aren't suitable uh, to generate voices. So uh, if you go to the booth where the rock band is, you will notice you will never hear one really singing. You might hear a melody, but you won't hear anybody singing. And that is because it is a MIDI file. A MIDI file is an instruction to, a, uh, to an electronic instrument. It is no voice, it's no uh, sound wave. But other than that, it's great fun. Okay. Are there any questions about uh, the rock band? So it's a great uh, karaoke uh, system. Mm. Yes, it is. Um, uh, is that an invitation to sing alone? <laughs> I'm not sure you want that because you uh, <laughs> ran away. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> I won't sing either. But if any one of you like to sing along, please uh, be my guest. Yeah. Other questions? I just no. I just want to say. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Aslin. Uh, some final words? Yes. Apart from uh, from. Apart from that, was, uh, what I want to add some, 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 uh, some words to what uh, Asweet said. Um, first, uh, I just want to, to emphasize again what, uh, what the internet makes, us, uh, makes, uh, makes possible today. Not only two people who didn't know each other working on the sa uh, before, working on the same idea, coming up with some, some uh, great stuff, and it's not only the internet that made that uh, possible, because it's also Lego Mindstorms. Because Lego Mindstorms is, is not only, it's, it's, it's not a toy at all, for some it is just a toy, but it's also a standardized system, a standardized system to build something. So people um, somewhere in, in the Netherlands and in Germany or in Iceland or wherever, they can build and join their, their stuff because it's the same it's the same things they build on so it's a standard you can you can rely on and then on the software side it's also a standard like the Java Sound API that you can rely on and that made that happen uh, that we made it as we came I came up with the first version of the software and we are both software developers so we could join effort and, and join our our, our care skills and I was able to do to, to enhance the software, to build tools on it, all around the core, and all that stuff. That's, that's pretty fascinating. And the other stuff, uh, the other point is what Aswin mentioned, this great idea of, of having... Um, lunch. Of having lunch, yes. Just two words. <laughs> Just um, of, of, of bringing musicians from over the world together, musician robots. Somebody of you, uh, some, some of you might know GBC, this kind of balls being transported uh, around of Lego balls. That's the same concept. We have a standardized some standards like how large has it to be, how fast have to move the balls, and so on. And that's all. And everybody can build it. And they come together on events and build. Just uh, put them all together. So, are you basically sending out an invitation to build additional but, uh, musician robots, and then we can join? And I'm dreaming of some some great orchestra with, with, with hundreds of uh, musician robots playing some symphony of Bruckner or Wagner or whatever. Yes, so that's it for now, what I have to say. <laughs>